Hi, good morning. My name is Elisa Sayol. I'm an associate professor here. I belong to the GPI uh, research group, and I'm working in several topics. Uh, one of them is face recognition. And this topic, uh, I work together with uh, Ramon Moro, so most of, I mean, I will present uh, several algorithms and very well-known algorithms in face recognition, but here I work with uh, Ramon Moros and some students. I think maybe one of them is here. <laughs> okay. Okay, so um, today I'm going to talk about uh, face recognition. I'm not going to talk about uh, face detection. We had the previous lecture was about object uh, detection, so some algorithms quite related to the ones that Miriam explained are used for face detection. Not many of them do uh, all the work together. There are some uh, authors that they do face detection and recognition, but most of the works are, are done separately. And I mean, wh when you want to recognize a, a person, you have first to detect in your image where you have the face, but uh, also, um, most algorithms, not all of them, especially uh, for the last years, many algorithms do not use face alignment, but at the beginning of using deep uh, networks and before deep networks, most faces had to be aligned to be uh, compared, to be recognized by, by the algorithms. And, uh, uh, not only online, but sometimes to, fro to be frontalized because the models many times use frontal faces, okay? So um, within face recognition, we have two tasks that we have to deal with. One is to identify a person. Uh, let's think the typical case is that you have a large database of possible people and uh, you have uh, one new picture and you have to identify who is that person? In some other context, you have another task, which is, uh, which is verification. You say, I'm claiming I'm this person, so you have to check if this person that claims to be a particular person is in that database. database. And this is uh, used, of course, for some uh, security uh, applications where, for example, you have a uh, you have to be in the database to enter to a, a, a certain building. Um, today, besides these uh, two problems of identification and verification, what I'm going to do is just mention a few databases because uh, when we talk about deep learning and we give results, usually these results are for given databases. So it's important that people that work in a, in a given problem uh, always work in databases that are the same uh, for comparison. You can create new databases, of course, but uh, it's a, a good way to compare. And I will talk about uh, some main contribution in the field in, in deep networks. Uh, starting from deep phase, which was the, the first method that gave a big jump of uh, of performance compared to past methods. I'm going to talk about FaceNet. Uh, um, let's say Deep Face is the solution of Facebook. Uh, FaceNet is the solution of Google. DeepID was also a very well-known uh, method that uh, was uh, proposed by some, some, from some research group that also worked with companies. And finally, I will uh, talk about uh, Sphere Faces which is um, maybe the, uh, a recent proposal on face, uh, recognition, um, face recognition that uh, gave also very nice results. Um, I will also talk about some challenges because uh, for uh, the problem of faces which have uh, nice resolutions and have frontal views, the performance are very good and now, nowadays it's very good, difficult to get uh, to improve results when your, your faces are very nice, frontalized, and with re good resolution. And also, I mean, uh, just to say what we are doing now at UPC. If you want to have a quick, uh, let's say, uh, an overall view of face recognition, you can go to this, uh, uh, to this last survey that uh, actually it's very recent, so you have a, 
uh, up-to-date uh, um, references on, on face recognition. Uh, as I said, one, one of the, uh, one of the, let's say, um, um, the communities or the, co the companies that use a lot face recognition is uh, companies that deal with face, uh, face security and security issues. There are other modalities to, to, mean to, to, to deal with security and identification, but in some contexts like buildings where you have cameras, uh, face recognition is a hot topic and uh, very used in, in these uh, security companies. You, you have a video if you want to afterwards check here and see how this, uh, these uh, people from NEC are, are face detecting uh, the faces in real time and also like uh, identifying the persons that are uh, going through, through this building. So this is a product of NEC, but many companies are, are doing this, um, dealing with this problem. Of course, they don't say how they do it. Huh? Okay, so let's uh, say something about identification and verification. And let's say that uh, most methods that deal with uh, face identification, uh, let's say they, they, they say that they are closed set uh, face uh, recognition uh, way to deal with the problem. So you start with a database, you have a training, you, you um, separate with a training and test sets. And then what you do is you, you train your, your dim network and at the, at the output you have a label, okay? So, and then for identification, you usually, when you have uh, your test, you try to identify this label, the probability of your, for example, your softmax that uh, this belongs to a particular person. When you are doing a verification, okay, if you have a, to say if these two persons are the same, comp you compare the labels. And your problem, uh, usually, it's a, it's a task when you have a classification problem and what you are doing is just to separate the features belonging to the different, uh, to the different uh, identities that you have in that database. You might, uh, instead of doing this approach, you can do what is called an open set face <laughs> recognition and basically there, you, I, uh, I mean, from every uh, identity, you keep the features. And what you're going to compare are features, not uh, labels, okay? So uh, usually these methods work with metric learning. Uh, Eva yesterday talked about metric learning, some measures of metric learning, where uh, she, she said that for a given class, what you are trying to do is to minimize the distance of the features within the class, but however, you are trying to, to each class for each identity to make them as far as possible. So this is metric learning, and this is uh, uh, usually what is done for a verification. Some methods work, let's say, uh, closed form solutions for classification, and then they jump to this, uh, open, uh, to this metric learning for identification. Um, so let's just mention a few databases that are uh, very well known in the community. Uh, the one that maybe it's older is the labelled faces in the wild. In the wild, there are not too many uh, examples or uh, training and, and test examples, but usually, uh, let's say, uh, mm, a lot of algorithms are training with uh, large databases, for example, with this uh, database that is from Microsoft. And then uh, your experiment, your results, you give them uh, four labeled faces in the world. So it's still a, a standard for testing that it's quite uh, used. So then you have uh, these uh, also well-known, uh, as I said, these, uh, this database with 10 million images. Uh, you have mega face. Each one of them has their peculiarities and they are used for, for testing and, and, and comparing results. YouTube Faces is also a very well-known database that uh, people uses. And, well, Faces Scrub 2, and uh, here we have created also what we call Google UPC. It's not published, but we used here also to, to train it with, uh, with our algorithms. So 
the evolution of these main, contribu main contributions comes along with uh, the appearance of these uh, architectures in the network. So as you know, AlexNet was uh, first um, um, uh, proposed in 2012. Then uh, it came VGGNet in 2014, uh, GoogleNet, and, and ResNet. Okay, so these are like, say, uh, uh, hot uh, networks that uh, when you start a new problem, you're going to, to test. And uh, also the methods to uh, recognize uh, faces were using these uh, very well-known architects. The face uh, started with AlexNet, uh, FaceNet used uh, GoogleNet, and VGG face. Um, uses VGG and this, uh, let's say, this new sphere phase, they use uh, uh, residual layers to, to let's say, to, for the con convolutional neural network, okay? I'm not going to say anything about VGG phase, but VGG phase is the, the architecture, it's a VGG, like uh, you, you were presented yesterday, and, uh, and it's trained with a large database of faces, that is uh, private, it's unknown, but um, uh, let's say uh, it's very popular to use this VGG phase to start, uh, for example, with your own database of faces. And, and usually you use VGG phase with fine tuning for your database to, to, to tackle with your own databases. So it's a, it's a quite popular um, also network that I'm not going to talk, but I was telling you that this is a, a VGG net, okay? Training with uh, millions of faces. Okay, so let's start with uh, the, the first architecture and the one that was, uh, let's say, uh, a, a jump in performance and, and probably the first uh, architecture uh, in 2014 to deal with this uh, face recognition problem. And so, uh, in this case, uh, before using the convolutional neural network, what they did was uh, uh, face detection, but also they used uh, 3D models of the faces to, uh, to get a model in 3D of that face and to frontalize. And, uh, and of course, when you input this into your, into your uh, convolutional neural network, you keep only a bounding box very close to, to your face. As you can see, it has a um, well, typical convolutional uh, layers, convolutional and pooling layers, and, and it ends up uh, having a, a, a fully connected layer with, uh, with the feature vector. Let's say that this algorithm needed a lot of, uh, of uh, alignment, so be, um, you need to have uh, a precise position of eyes, nose, uh, etc. Because in some parts of the of the network of the convolutional neural network, in the same in the same uh, let's say feature vector, they don't share the weight. So in different parts of the eyes, mouth, the the weights of your filters for obtaining the feature maps were different. Okay, so they said, okay, justified. Of course, it's different. Uh, the region of the eyes and the region of the nose. So this was uh, their approach for uh, face classification, okay? So they, they, they use this network and, uh, and for verification, we jump to metric learning and uh, Eva and Laura yesterday mentioned the, the CMS network, so like they use a CMS network and uh, on, on top of this CMS network, what they trying to, uh, to uh, they use uh, an, uh, an absolute difference to, that is trained with these, uh, with these parameters, uh, okay, to, uh, to train it for the verification problem in, to separate one class from the other. They use a, a couple of, of, uh, of networks. I mean, one was the CMEs and the other one was this chi-square distance which has this uh, formulation. And uh, also, it, it has to be trained for the weights. And it used uh, a, a super vector machine, like we have seen in some, some other problems. Uh, after feature, uh, obtaining the feature from the convolutional neural network, sometimes you use a, 
other um, uh, machine learning uh, classifiers or uh, to to obtain I mean to, to obtain a maximum in this case is the support vector machine okay so this was the solution that Facebook uh, provided um, let's say the other solution that was also uh, one year later proposed by Google was the FaceNet and in this case uh, they say okay we are going to use uh, a deep architecture they say you can use any architecture that you want uh, to train for uh, the classification problem and then they use after this, uh, uh, this architecture a uh, triple loss function it was also mentioned yesterday uh, when you have uh, in your to train your architecture you you train the architecture using uh, triplets not when you are training the verification in the previous uh, uh, proposal you, you enter two examples but here you enter three you have an anchor uh, which is your reference and with this anchor you, you, you introduce a positive uh, example which is the same identity that the anchor and a negative and you're going to train your network like to obtain that this positive is close to your reference and the negative is far from the anchor okay so this is what the, the triple loss function does as you see for one side when you have the, the the, the anchor and the positive, uh, you try to minimize this. Um, and of course, you, you want to maximize the difference between the anchor and the negative. And you use a, a, an additional parameter to, to make it a little bit more flexible. Uh, you have also an embedding to project your, your feature vectors. And uh, as it is said in this paper, uh, the problem here is that if you have a, a huge database, and I'm telling you that Google had a database of 100 million uh, ima face images, uh, the problem here is to choose a nice triplets. If you use triplets that uh, start from here, your network is not uh, going to learn anything, okay? Because the, it's the, 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 the network works fine. So you have to choose carefully your triplets, and this is one of the main issues of this, uh, of this network. Uh, in order that the, the network uh, learns what you want. So you don't have to put very easy problems, nor very difficult problems. But their, their network is, is working with very nice results in recognition. And so this is another example. And uh, uh, the, a third one, which uh, uh, also appeared uh, uh, mm, also in the beginning of in 2014, but it was also it, it, it's I mean it's also a reference is Deep ID, and in this case uh, they try to solve the problem of verification and identification at the same time. So they have a loss function which is that you have to minimize for the verification. In this case, it's a Euclidean distance. And, uh, in for, the, and for the identification, so you, you do uh, the typical, uh, you have the, your softmax and you have, um, you will going to use the cross entropy loss function. As you see here, you have, uh, you have parameters of your convolutional network, but you have implicit some parameters of your network which are of the verification problem and of the identification problem okay so uh, just to not not to go into details but when you you do your back propagation and you compute your gradients you're going your gradients of your uh, of your network you're going to going to take into account um, sorry it's in, in here your identification gradients and your verification mm -hmm. gradients okay so it combines both things to you, you are training the network for both problems and they also did something is that they created 25 different networks using different parts of the phases so like they have this uh, they generate 25 networks and each network has an output of 160 dimensions 
And then, of course, this creates, if you multiply, you have 4,000 4, dimensions. And then they compress this by PCA, which is also something that sometimes when you have very large uh, feature vectors, you try to, to compress this feature vector. One option is to use a PCA. That's what they do. And, and then here, let's introduce another uh, metric learning, which is uh, John Bayesian and was used before deep learning. And uh, uh, your face is treated like uh, um, um, a model that represents uh, inter, inter, intrapersonal variations and interpersonal variations. And both are Gaussian distribution, distributed and they are uh, estimated during training. And then what you want to do is to maximize this function which has the, the probability that, uh, let's say, that the two instances that you are uh, checking, uh, it's, it's maximum for uh, interpersonal variation and minimal for uh, extrapersonal hypothesis. Okay, so this is the basis of the John Bayesian, and this is their way to apply metric learning for phase verification. Okay, at the end we will have a, a comparison of these uh, techniques in performance. But let's go now, let's jump now to the, this proposal uh, that is from last year and that it's also, let's say, uh, the one that has uh, quite more uh, relevance in this last year. It's this sphere phase. And um, it's again, uh, uh, think about what I said uh, before that we are in the last step or, or in the previous step of our uh, convolutional neural network where you have feature vectors, and usually you apply uh, your loss function is a softmax uh, loss function, where you have, uh, in, in a, uh, you have this uh, product of uh, your weights and, and your vector, and, your, and, and this is the typical loss, loss, uh, loss function of softmax, but then they say, okay, why don't we take uh, the projection of, um, of, uh, of, of these, uh, uh, the matrix of, and over this vector, and what I obtain is uh, this, uh, uh, let's say, the, the angle between, uh, uh, with uh, respect to this uh, weight, okay? So this is the, the projection. We'll see bef afterwards some, some graphicals that we will uh, see more what are we doing here. But then this is uh, the first step. So this is a modified softmax function. Then they say, okay, why don't we introduce here a parameter in this projection with an M? So uh, uh, what this makes is that if you have uh, two identities, identity one and two, for example, uh, to correctly classify uh, identity two, you have uh, this comparison which is divided par by M. So it's easy, easier to get this uh, condition than this one. So you make your problem easier. And then they, again, they use this softmax, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, uh, this function, and they modify it a little bit. So it's a function of the cosine, plus, well, with this factor here and, and minus 2K, okay? So, but basically keep this idea of projection and with this, uh, with this M factor that they introduce. So if you look at this in, in, uh, in, uh, in this projection in a sphere, for example, in this 2D problem, this is what you get with your softmax loss, an example of different subjects of two different uh, identities when you project your 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 soft well, when you project two this into uh, let's say uh, in this case it's an, it's not an sphere an hypersphere it's a it's a circle what you get is what you have in this second picture and you can see that it's difficult to separate these two identities when you project this okay with the modifiers of max that is when you introduce that projection over a cosinus your distribution now, it's like it's shown here. And when you see your projection in the hypersphere, you see that you may separate better one, class, one identity from the other. 
with this new, uh, uh, what is called angular <laughs> softmax loss, now your, uh, your feature vectors are like that. So you have clear separation of one identity and the other with this uh, projection. And when you go to the angular projection, they are very far one from the other. So that's what the they, they, they metric learning is doing, uh, this separation. You can see something similar uh, with, uh, with a, 3D, uh, pro a 3D projection instead of 2D. And you see uh, the difference, uh, I mean, uh, comparison. And you end up having uh, your in, uh, identities quite separated one from the other. So this is their idea. They also play a little bit with this m factor and say, OK, when I have m equal to 1, what I have actually is the, is the modifiers of max. But if I increase the, this m factor, um, this, these uh, distributions here are mm, positive pair and negative pairs. Okay? So you see in here that how with increasing this m two minutes, uh, you can, you can separate this, you can improve better your, your verification. And here some of, of you have here the, the network is based on a, on a ResNet with this change of loss function, these angulars of max. So here you have some results with D phase, uh, phase net, D by D. So phase net is the best, but it was trained with 200 million faces. This web phase, uh, this is trained with web phase, which means um, I don't know how big it is, but I'm, it's not that big. It's not, not even a million. But the, the good thing to compare here is that uh, see the difference between using softmax, uh, triplet, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and and then the I mean they they, they compare softmax with this sphere phase, and using this loss function improves. A, I mean a lot. Uh, we are now uh, in, a, in a step, I told you, with a face recognition with nice faces that it's very difficult to improve and they, and they get very nice results using this loss function. Okay? And just to tell you that these results were very nice with uh, um, databases uh, that have nice faces, but still there are a lot of uh, problems in identifying people when, uh, when you have occlusions, when you have uh, different poses. Also, there are some people working in what happens with, uh, with the age that you modify. Uh, of course, your face changes. They are using, for example, GANs to model this change. Uh, there are several um, challenges. For example, in, in the dark, you're using uh, you're using uh, inter in infrared images, but your databases are for visual. So how you compare your infrared with uh, visual, uh, visual uh, databases, you have problems of low resolution. And so there are many, many problems still to solve, uh, like, uh, well, like spoofing here. And so there's still a lot of uh, room for working in this field and to solve things. And just to finish saying that, OK, with uh, Ramon, we have done several projects and challenges in medieval. And uh, we have worked with some students. Uh, uh, and right now, we are dealing with open sets, which means what happens when we are dealing with people that are not in the databases. And one of the solutions, for example, is this open max. Again, this is a modification of the soft max to deal with um, in what can you do with your feature vectors when you have um, new feature vectors that were not in the, in the database to, to simplify. Uh, besides that survey, you can also go to this phase and you have also a very nice selection of, of papers in phase recognition. And that's it. Thank you.